Good day, everyone. Welcome back. And as per usual, I am Michelle, and I am here with Luca today, and we are going to tackle how AI is being used in crime. So, well, Luca, tell us. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, so this is a this is a a market in early stage of development mm -hmm. for in certain for those certain aspects. Um, for instance, um, you know, social media. You know, curating and blocking of illicit content. This is this is a new business essentially, and I actually mm -hmm. have a good started as a company, uh, especially in uh, in the in the curation uh, problem. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are other legacy uh, businesses, um, for instance, banks and large corporations. Obviously, cybersecurity fraud detection. Um, mm -hmm. This problem has been have been around for decades, so this is this is more a more mature application field for AI and uh, machine mm -hmm. learning, and then there are uh, you know all other businesses, and uh, here I'm um, referring to all the businesses that are experimenting with artificial intelligence for mm -hmm. risk management, uh, uh, for um, yeah uh, cyber crime because as uh, the recent past uh, teaches us. Uh, the risks of, uh, you know, leaking customer data, it's uh, very, very um, uh, real. Mm -hmm. And the bad news is that we have witnessed uh, more and more breaches over the last 12, 18 months. Mm -hmm. The geopolitical situation doesn't help. Uh, we know that a lot of um, um, these breaches come from specific uh, geographical areas, such as mm -hmm. Russia and um, um, North Korea. So geographies where AI and cybercrime is uh, uh, not prosecuted as it is um, prosecuted here in um, uh, Europe or in um, in the US. So it's a very very evolving, very fast evolving uh, industry. I see. That is uh, it's very interesting. So you're saying that there's really no uniform way of like how it's being used across the industry. So it's kind of like depends on which players are using it politically and also like the technology capacity, is that it? Yeah, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that, you know, traditional crime um, has some, let's say, geographical boundaries, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you want to rob a bank, you have to be in front of the bank, right? Or you have yeah. to be in front <laughs> of the bank. Now with cybercrime, it means that geography is not a problem anymore. You can be in... Uh, uh, North Korea and attack mm -hmm. a server in uh, Washington, okay? Or maybe uh, you know you you are in North Korea and uh, you rent servers in um, in the U.S. and then from mm -hmm. the U.S. you um, yeah you run attacks within uh, that country where you you know that you have never visited and uh, uh, you will never visit. So it's a much more challenging uh, scenario where. The crime has evolved uh, with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with technology, and technology is trying to chase. Yeah, it, that seems to be the relationship. No, so you think we'll be seeing a lot more of these crimes in the future? It seems that the crime is a little bit ahead of the regulation and of the prevention. As usual, I mean, um, think about IoT. I mean, in a, a very recent future, uh, we will have a lot of our devices connected including mm -hmm. you know our um doorbell including uh, our i don't know oven and so on okay uh, with all these devices connected the possibility to um yeah possibility of breach is certainly increasing therefore more mechanisms for uh, preventing uh, breaches and preventing attacks need to be divided, devised more mm -hmm. importantly um, you know, there must be a an entity that regulates how those devices are sold, uh, because only if uh, certain regulations are met or some se certain security guidelines are attained, uh, those products should be sold to uh, consumers. Otherwise, you just uh, they're just liability. Yeah, it seems like with catching up with digitization and the evolution of tech we kind of all have to be a little bit more vigilant because the regulation has yet to really match the speed at which it's yeah evolving. Exactly. And think about autonomous vehicles, okay? Mm -hmm. Imagine yourself driving at 100 miles per hour on a motorway 
and somebody hacks into the operating system of that car. I mean, you they could yeah. kill you and uh, <laughs> it's softer, you know, it's much easier to kill you that way yeah. than uh, with a gun. If if that oh, autonomous goodness. vehicle is not is not you know 100% uh, secured from a uh, from a, um, a cybercrime perspective, so look, I don't want to scare anybody. Uh, what I'm trying <laughs> to say here is again, uh, the pace of innovation is staggering. Um, don't expect that regulators will follow uh, this high pace of innovation. So before you know, before purchasing anything, you just try to understand uh, what are the implications for your own safety, because there are implications. And maybe, yeah, uh, governments and regulators will get there with a 12, 18 months delay. <laughs> so you want to be sure that in that period, you're covered. <laughs> all right. So everyone, you've all heard it from here, from the expert, be vigilant. Remember, look into the products that you're using, particularly for tech. Get the reviews right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Okay. And uh, I'll, see, I'll see you in the next episode. In the meantime, please uh, uh, like our content and uh, subscribe to our channels. Thank you. All right. Thank you.